Good morning, Empowered Living Community. I am so stoked for you today. Um, I've got two of my faves, uh, two of my favorite people that I have had an opportunity to work with, get to know, uh, participate in, in programs with, and they are going to be two of our mentors in the six-figure mentorship uh, program. You know, um, this idea came, I was having a, um, a business meeting with my staff and we talked about maybe me doing, you know, a call once a month. And then, you know, uh, Annie Hall jumped in and said, oh, I'd be willing to do something. And then Jen Armato jumped in and then we thought, who would we want? And, and it's the whole concept behind it is who you learn from matters, right? And so we want people who have earned six figures or more, six figures or more, to pour into other people. So Angela Hooper Menefeld, welcome. Great to have you. Thank you so much. I am so honored and excited to be here. Just thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> You're well. And Dr. Stephen Crawford, my friend, how are you? Oh man, this stuff fires me up, Paul. So thanks for the invite. And I I I think we've we've already jumped in. So it's this is this just uh your calls have been amazing and and just all the mentors that have gone so far, just unbelievable. So uh Stephen is up. You're up uh, this coming this coming Tuesday, guys, March 22nd, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, and then Saturday, March 26th at 8 a.m. Angela, you're you're doing the morning crowd. And uh, Angela, I, I want I, I want to I just want you to talk about you and I were on a call, and you had shared a story that I just thought was just epic because it's it's a story about breaking invisible boundaries and it happens to so many entrepreneurs where we have a vision and it just seems like a moonshot. It almost seems like impossible. Um, but we latch onto it. Will, will you share that, that, that's that, that story. Sure. So what I had done was I was actually, it was the first uh, Monday in October of last year, October, 2021, I was on a group call with some of the participants in our membership program, and I was trying to get them to set goals for the fourth quarter. And so I was, you know, trying to do the rah rah, like, yeah, let's let's bring it and you know finish the year strong. And you know, so what are your goals? And they were in the chat, and not to you know be harsh, but these were the puniest goals. And <laughs> you know, they were saying stuff like, I want to make three thousand dollars, but I knew they'd done that. And so it's not that $3,000 is bad, but I knew they had done that. And I said, no, guys, when I say goals, I mean, let's go for the rafters. And, you know, so again, I'm all in this mode. And one of the things I've learned from being mentored by you is, well, one of the best ways to lead is lead by example. So I said, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I said, so for me, for instance, you know, here's what my goal is going to be for me for the fourth quarter. So I sat there for a second and I thought about, well, you know, what would be a really rafter moment? And I said, okay, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next 90 days. And of course the chat went crazy because they were like, what? A hundred thousand dollars. And I said, well, what do I have to lose? Even if I miss, let's say I make 70,000, 70, <sighs> that's still a good quarter because while I have definitely made six figures in a year, I'd never made six figures in a quarter. And so that's what I said. And every week I would, you know, honor that. And I began to speak into it and, 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 and read it to myself, you know, every day in my desire statement from Think and Grow Rich, which I've studied with you millions of times, right? <laughs> yeah. And the first month was pretty average. It was like it always been, you know, five figure month, nothing extra. The next month, things start to feel different. Again, I'm speaking it, it's manifesting. I'm having conversations that I'm like, the potential is really here to do this. And so about mid-November, I even looked at my husband. I was like, uh-uh. I said, you know what? I said, I'm, I'm afraid to speak it out loud. I said, but I think I'm going to do it. He was like, really? <laughs> like, it was, I said, yeah, but I wouldn't tell anybody else. I was scared. It was like, it's so real that it's so real. Long, yeah. story short, long story short, in 90 days, I made a little over $110,000 in one day, in one day. And because, you know, I've also, you know, done the 20,000 day call with you. And I was like, man, I can make a $20,000 in a day. And so my biggest day up till now, I think I've been $25,000. And one day I had in my hand physical possession 
uh, sixty thousand dollars of checks, which is that other wow. story. But because <laughs> um, some of my entities play with checks, and it, and it got to the point that because I bank remotely, I'm not in the same state as my bank. I actually had difficulty. <sighs> <laughs> depositing my money because there are limitations apparently in how much you can deposit with a phone. <laughs> yeah. Those are good problems to have when you've got more, you got more money than the bank will take. Yes. And then it had weekly limits too. Like you can only do 50,000 in a week. So I'm like, really I got to hold on to my money. So I literally had to FedEx or UPS my, my, the one, che one check was 26,000 to my financial planner who lives in the state that my bank is in and have him manually walk the check into the bank because they would not take it from me. That is awesome. And so look, you if you wanna know how she did that on March 26, this coming Saturday, so a week from today at 8 a.m., Angela is in the business building lane and she's gonna help you think into your goals. Steven, you, you're, you're teaching in communication. Um, I think that's an area that just most most people think they've got it. Um, but, you know, I, I remember Les Brown saying to me, because I was, I, I was speaking and I thought I was good, right? I thought I was good. And, and after I was done speaking, Les started to critique me. And I think he could see from my face that uh, I was realizing that I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And... And he said, you know, when you're done speaking, tell me what happens. And I said, well, people come up to me and tell me all the time that it was a great talk, that I did a great job. And he said, ne never listen to the opinions of untrained ears and people who won't write you a check. <laughs> and I thought, ah, oh, that's good. So there are levels in communication, aren't there? There are. And, you know, listen, words are our power. I mean, when you really think about it, everybody that makes every decision makes it because they came across the right words that influence them to do the right thing. But it's bigger than the words, isn't it? It's, it, it's the words, it's the gestures, it's the tonality, it's the energy that we deliver. And with unfocused energy, you know, the sun is powerful, right? But unfocused energy, we go out and we get a tan. A laser, absolutely focused, burns holes through metal, through diamonds. It shapes things. And unfocused communication, all of us communicate. We all release different ideas, thoughts, words, energies as we come in contact with people. But if you really, really want to be effective, you have to learn how to focus your words to deliver the level of energy that will not only empower, but actually invite people into a transformation process. And so I guess, you know, we can take a long time, but it, it took me six years before I was able to get to six figures, you know, it, when I started in entrepreneurship. And if we can take six minutes, I, I'm, I'm convinced that I can teach people in six minutes what it took me six years to learn. And and, and wow. when I got to six, six figures, then, you know, doubling it, I, actually, I think I tripled it the next year. And then I doubled that the next year. I, I, I think it's, 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 there's a process to mentorship that we just, we have to embrace that why would you want to go the long way around? I mean, I, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I drove the short bus, but it wasn't that short. I'm not going to sit here and try to learn on my own what I can learn with the wealth of knowledge. I mean, I'm going to be on Angela's Saturday morning call. I, I, I'm just, I'm captivated by this idea of how quickly can I get there? How can I shorten the goal? How can I shorten the path to my goals? And so that's kind of where, where I'm not only driven, not only to contribute, but also to learn and embrace and to jump full force into this community. I'm excited about it. Well, well thank you. You know, um, Joseph McClendon arguably is one of the best communicators in the world. He's been the teaching partner with Anthony Robbins for at least 15 years. About 30 years. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's been he's been I mean, he's been with Anthony Robbins forever yeah. and and leads leads with Anthony Robbins. And if Anthony's sick, it's it's Joseph and, and, and Anthony's not sick. It's Joseph and Anthony, you know, uh, and and when when Joseph McClendon started his certification program, he chose you as a faculty member for the area of communication. So again, guys, for those of you who are watching, who you learn from matters. This Tuesday night, 8 p.m., you want to be on with you want to be on with Stephen. If you at all want to be a platform speaker, 
If you, if you want to learn how to captivate an audience, connect with an audience, move an audience, um, master your presentation, Stephen's going to be a great, uh, just a fantastic facilitator for you. You're going to love it. And, and mentorship is, is critical. Uh, Angela, who has, when you think of your life, um, you know, as an African-American woman, going through college and entering into, you know, into, into the business world. Um, did you have some mentors who, 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 who helped you navigate that pathway? Open doors for you. Definitely. As a, as a preteen teenager, one of my strongest mentors was actually a woman who ultimately I asked to be, I was like, will you be my godmother? It was one of those situations, whereas my parents didn't pick my godparents, I picked them. <laughs> But it was partly because she was such an, or is a, such a phenomenal woman, um, educated, professional. She embodied service to others. And, and what she really did was she took me under her tutelage. She treated me as if I was a child of her own. She loved on me, but she, you know, gently, you know, slapped my hand when it needed to be slapped. But she, you know, and she talked to me about things that I couldn't even see for myself. You know, I had mm. amazing parents, but neither one of my parents went to college. And so she was actually that sales of recognition for me of what continuing my education could look like, what professional life as a woman of color leader could look like. And so it started early. And then when I, you know, went to college, there were mentors. Um, some of them came through my sorority, some of them came through professors and other people in my life. And then ultimately when I started my career in the federal government, similarly, um, even my first boss, I, I, I shared this story recently with someone, the first manager I had, he was an older white gentleman with gray hair and he, but he just mentored me. He, he did, he just brought me in and he was, he was able to, to explain to me things that he'd learned through the years, places where I could take, as Stephen just said, shortcuts. Why go the long way around if someone's already traveled that journey and they can help you learn from their lessons? You know, we so often give people credit from not making the same mistake twice, but how about never making it because you listen to those who've been there, done that before you? And so yeah. through my entire career, and then of course, once I became an entrepreneur, you were that voice for me and still are. I mean, like I can't imagine my life right now without knowing that I can get on a one-to-one -one phone call with you when I need to. And so yeah. Steven's a mentor to me. You know, we mentor each other. This team of mentors that you put together, top notch. I think you could stack these names up against any names, anywhere, yeah. anytime, any place. So mentorship is definitely the key. That is so good. It is, it is so, and you know, and I, as I try to explain on my first call is that a mentor isn't somebody who just opens a door for you. Once you, once they've opened that door for you, they walk, they walk through it, right? And they position, they make sure you get a seat at the table. Mentorship isn't the transference of knowledge. It's, it's the transference of opportunity and influence. Stephen, who's, who's, who's mentored you? Were there some mentors along your way? You know, it would, you know, what's, very, very challenging, probably in the early years is I was looking for mentors and couldn't find any. Uh, you know, I, re I so I read yeah. books, relied upon books and everything to kind of work through the process. Uh, there are people that I honored, respected, and I learned from, uh, but it was nothing intentional about it. And, uh, you know, some people say, unfortunately, fortunately for me, but it's influenced the way that I do mentorship. I, my first mentors, I had to pay for. I had to come out of my pocket and give cash, my own hard earned money to actually do it. But I don't think it would have carried the level of energy and, and, and transference and, and, and almost uh, transformation had I not been that committed to it to actually give my, give my own resources. So mm -hmm. is, is, it, it, mentorship isn't, like I said, it's, it's a starting point, but you have to stay committed. And I and so I I had to do that. And I as I started doing it, what was amazing is as I started investing in myself, I became the caliber of person where other people would see me that didn't require money and would bring me alongside and say, I want to talk to you. Mm. But I had to get through some levels first uh, and break through. So I, I I love that. And people ask me, why do you love working with entrepreneurs? I said, because they're willing to risk it all and 
put it on them. I said that that's sometimes, and, and so it compels me to do it. And so I have to be careful, even in, in, in my mentorship, because I, 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 I would give the farm away because I just love the process of transformation, but I have to be careful. Am I doing a disservice by mentoring some people too much? Mm. If they haven't invested in themselves yet. And so I, mm-hmm. I, I, I have to create boundaries and limits for that because I know what it took for me to experience my transformation. Wow, that is a great point. As people prepare for your calls, you know, what, what do they need to bring to your calls? And I, I'll ask each of you, Angela, I'll let you go first. What do they need to bring in order to get the best out of you, right? Because I mean, that's, I think the, the important thing is, is that people think, you know, for mentorship, you show up with a pad of paper and pen and you take notes, you kind of sit at the foot of the master, they think. And that's really not it. The responsibility of a mentorship relationship really falls on the mentee, doesn't it? I mean, they have to come, you know, the quality of the answers that they're going to get from their mentors based on the quality of the questions they ask, right? And, and they're being prepared and their willingness to be vulnerable. How does somebody best prepare for, you know, mentorship with you, Angela, when you're going to be doing it your, your next Saturday, March 26th, a week from today at eight o'clock in the morning? What does somebody Well, I think a couple of things that people can do when they're going to listen to or participate in a mentoring relationship with anybody is, you know, maybe learn a little bit more about the person. Because as you mentioned, the quality of the question. So while the question may be about their business, if they understand some of the things that I have done, they're better able to even ask that question. Say, well, you know, I noticed here when you were in X situation, this or that happened, you know, and here's where I am. But now it 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 speaks to the reason why I even understand why you would be a great person to answer this question for me. It also mm. speaks to understanding the journey. Um, and that there are various journeys and, and maybe it gives us an opportunity to even before we get on the call, begin to see things differently. Maybe I always thought this was the, these were the steps and this was the way I was going to do it. But by just looking at Steven's journey or Angela's journey, I can say, you know what, their journeys were a little different, but they still ended up in the destination. I would also say that be willing to receive and try. One of the things that I've seen thousands of times that people jump on calls, they ask for assistance, mentorship and support, but then the next time you talk to them, they hadn't done anything. Or they talked to 20 other people and what they did was they took what you gave them and then they served it to other people to see if they thought it was tasty. No, (laughs) you eat it first, right? Like you sample it, it was given for you because this wasn't the medicine. That's so good. (laughs) So just show up with, uh, you know, the intent of I am here to get something. It's good to Mm. listen. And of course, we learn from one another calls, but I am showing up to come and get something in particular that's going to take me just one step closer to what I envision for my business and what I see for my life. And I think when Mm. we set uh, intentionality and we show up with purpose, and then openness, you know, be willing to receive what comes because again, how Stephen and I say it may not be how you were expecting it or any of the mm-hmm. mentors. So I think those are a couple of things that I would encourage people to do and definitely then come back. Don't, like, don't just listen to one call, <laughs> listen to a call, get something, go get a result and then come back with it. So we can continue, yeah. as you say, to walk you through that journey. That is brilliant because I, I can't I cannot tell you the number of times when I'm you know on group mentoring calls like this where I say, you know, to those who are listening. So I'm mentoring the person, but I know that there's a broader audience, right? There's a community audience who's listening. And 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 I'm very careful to say, look, I'm not giving the answer. I'm giving this person their answer. You may you may ask the exact same question, and and I'm going to give you a completely different answer right so this idea of you know don't take what the mentor says and then start passing it out to see if everybody else likes it it was meant for you not for the masses you know um that is a wonderful i mean it's a great point and also you know we're we're doing tuesday night steven's coming up this tuesday night at eight o'clock and 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 uh saturday mornings eight o'clock so th- this time next week um uh, uh, angela beyond um it, 
get back on make 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 those make the you know it's it's only it, it's, it's only two one hour slots a week make time to be on the calls and don't grow alone invite other people Stephen, what would you what would you say how does what, what does somebody need to bring from themselves in order to get the most out of their time with you well paul one of the biggest challenges i think that we all face is uh and I, the way i like to frame it is that the biggest delusion is we think we live in the world when in fact we're living in a story um, and we're, it, it, we have to learn how to master our stories, not just the story that we exist in, because that's kind of the business building lane that Andrew's kind of teaching us about. It's also the stories that we tell ourselves and how do we do those things. And, and the greatest experience and the most credibility we'll ever have comes from the stories uh, that we bring out of our own lives and that we're able to project into the world. And so I would say, uh, be ready to come ready mastering your, to master your stories, uh, because if you do that, uh, start putting together the pieces and start putting together the ideas that you want to communicate to the world. Uh, I am going to challenge people to have a conversation. Uh, most of us, uh, whether we be empowers, helpers, healers, whatever we call ourselves, uh, we came out of a world where we were fixing something that was broken within us. And our calling to the world, our unique call to the world is to speak to that. And so if you were going to have a conversation with yourself, when you were in a dark place, before your epiphany, before your awareness uh, was lifted, um, you know, what was the state of that person? What would you say to them? How would you talk to them? So starting to prepare your own stories is how I would encourage people to come to the calls because we're going we're, we're gonna to dig deep into that in order to help them think through that in order to really uh, take their communication to the next level. Right on. Well, I want to just thank you both for saying, I mean, I sent you guys an email and said, hey, would you be, and both of you responded back with just a, a very quick yes. And, and I so appreciate that. I, 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 I agree with what you said, Angel. When you look at this group of people um, who've come together to, to not only give, but to give back, because all of us have had somebody pour into our lives. All of us have had opportunities given to us, doors open to us. And so in many ways, you know, from our heart, what we're doing is we're we're really giving back and the beautiful thing that you'll find when you're on these calls is that these are not sales pitches these are not said there's nothing for you to buy uh this is a true direct give to you that all 25 of these mentors are are fully invested in your growth that's the payment that they're looking for they're looking to see you grow your results your transformation is truly their payday. So Angela, Stephen, thank you guys so much for jumping, making time to be on the show. And again, this coming Tuesday night, uh, March 22nd, 8 p.m., Stephen Crawford on communication, and March 26th, a week from today, 8 a.m., Angela Hooper Manifield. Thank you guys so much. Love you. Be well. Goodbye. Thank you.